Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone, wherever in the world you may be joining us from today. My name is Francesco Del Carpio, and I am the CFAL York Operations Coordinator. I would like to officially open the fifth session of our VR XR Training and Education Knowledge and Experience Sharing Speaker Series, presented in collaboration with the DEXAR Lab at York University with a land acknowledgement. We acknowledge and recognize that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territory upon which our campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. The area is known as Tukaranto and has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat. It is now home to many First Nation, Inuit, and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and the territory which is subject to the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. As this is an online event and our participants may be joining from various locations, I strongly encourage you to learn about the traditional land upon which you are located. With this, I welcome our moderator, our speaker, and our participants from around the world. Welcome to our webinar. Without further ado, it is my great pleasure to introduce our moderator, Dr. Ahmad Mohammadi. Dr. Ahmad Mohammadi is a postdoctoral fellow in the Department of Civil Engineering at York University in Toronto, Ontario, where he received his PhD in transportation engineering. His research focuses on applications of virtual reality in transportation safety, traffic conflict analysis, and traffic microsimulation modeling. His research contributes to improving transportation safety and efficiency. Ahmad is also the coordinator of Disaster and Emergency Extended Virtual Reality Dexar Lab at York University. Dr. Ahmad, thank you for moderating today's session. The floor is yours. Uh, thank you very much, Francesco. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back to uh, another speaker series today. I'm so excited to be uh, again moderating for this session. Uh, yeah, again, my name is Ahmed, and I'm, I will moderate two the sessions. I will pass questions and keep time and ensure that everyone has uh, a chance to participate. Uh, I'm excited to moderate the discussion today, which is about VR education benefits for students with uh, economically disadvantaged background in colleges. Today we have a fantastic paneler, which is, uh, who is uh, Maas. And uh, before introducing our speaker, I would like to say that the main presentation would be around half an hour to 40 minutes. And after that, we will hold the question and answer sessions. So make sure that you put the questions in the chat, or you can also uh, request a mic so that we can we can come and directly ask your question inside the room. So now let's uh, introduce our speaker. So today our speaker is Maz Muhammad, who is he heading the global sales at Mainikara. Mainikara is based out in India. Their business is to provide solutions in augmented and virtual reality technologies for more than 10 years. They have recently established their presence in Canada since uh, 2023. And uh, Maz is leading the partnership in Canada. He has prior experience in providing business analysis solutions across uh, diverse industries. His deep understanding of different business sectors enables him to analyze complex problems uh, streamline processes and ensure the highest quality standards to any organization seeking to optimize operations and achieve unparalleled excellence. Uh, Maz is a volunteer with Seek Discomfort, which is an online group uh, who basically assists uh, people to take whole plants at Toronto's Beach, uh, which has huge mental health benefits. So. Now let's uh, uh, see how this speaker series will go. Thank you very much. So Maz, now you can introduce yourself and start your presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ahmed, for the good introduction. 
So let me share my screen. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Maz Mohammed from Manikara. This is an XR solutions company. So now we are based in Canada and India both. And, and special thanks to Dr. Ali Asghar. I still remember when we met, uh, you were talking about the mission of uh, Sifal Yog, which works towards a global outreach, bringing a positive change, bridging gaps and facilitating a range of inspirational training and research opportunities. And today I'm excited to discuss a groundbreaking development in the field of education, the implementation of virtual reality education in schools, especially when we implemented, uh, this was a research project Right, which we implemented in a beautiful state of uh, Tamil Nadu, which is in the south part of India, in Chennai. Right. So let me move on to the next slide and, and show you what are the key, key takeaways you'll be learning from today's session. So today we'll talk about the importance of education in India, where many Kaira first implemented VR education labs with the partnership of government of Tamil Nadu. You'll also see why UVR education is for school students. Right? You'll also see the implementation of VR labs and the impact of it in schools. So let's move on to the next one where, so the first thing is the importance of education in India, right? So we have seen that uh, India has a total population of 90%, 19% of uh, children po population of the world. Right? And if you see on a whole, one third of the population is illiterate. Right? India can have the most educated population by using its resources to educate its youth. Right? Since education is a powerful tool for the uneducated population to grow, to grow, and it is also very useful for their socio and economic uh, well-being. Right? Education is a basic foundation of society, enabling socio-economic growth. An important landmark in Indian education sector is the implementation of Right to Education Act. So this was implemented when uh, British left the country and India got its independent. The main aim for this is to provide free and compulsory education to all uh, between the age of six and 14. Right? So here comes the picture of uh, virtual reality. Right? So now virtual reality has emerged as a powerful tool for education transforming traditional learning experiences into immersive and interactive sessions. VR education can provide students with a personalized and engaging learning experiences, making it an effective teaching aid. Studies have shown that VR education has improved retention rates on students. Right? According to a study by National Training Laboratory, retention rate for traditional lectures are five percentage. And usually in classroom, when a student sits in a class, is the retention rates are just 5% because their attention and a focus are uh, spread across different parts. Right? But when a VR device is worn and when an education is, when a, when a student learns through that, we have seen that the retention rates are, are 75%. Right? It provides students with real world applications of theoretical concepts, for example, Students experience, can experience history by walking through a virtual museum, or they can learn about uh, astronomy by exploring the solar system. Right? This hands-on experience can make learning more interesting and engaging for kids. Right? So VR education is accessible to students from diverse backgrounds. So this content, which is created in this uh, VR device, can be accessible to any location and to any school students of any economic status. It can bridge the gap between various economic classes in society, thereby allowing students in remote areas to access quality education. The main aim for this virtual reality education is to provide a digital experience with a quality content. So VR education also allows students to learn at their own pace and receiving personalized attention, which is often not possible in traditional classroom sessions. So a good example is students will be immersed in that environment and even a class a class teacher can also be involved in it where a teacher and student interaction can happen which in the virtual world so this individualized approach can cater to students unique learning needs and abilities so the implementation of vr labs in school so what many did 
right? We were interested by the government of Tamil Nadu to provide VR-based education. The initiative to implement was aimed at enhancing the learning experience, increasing retention rates. That was the main thing because uh, uh, when government approached us, so we were seeing that uh, students were not uh, in the school, right? So and the dropout rates were were going high. So that was the main area where the retention rate should be uh, retention rates uh, of the stu school students should be maintained. So this was launched by Honorable Minister for School Education for Tamil Nadu. Uh, it's, uh, his name is Mr. Ambil Amahesh Poyamoli, Honorable Minister for Youth Welfare, which you can see in the pictures, they are there. And Sports Development of Tamil Nadu, Mr. Udhanidhi Stalin, the person who is uh, uh, installing the device to the student. And, and also from the member of Lok Sabha, Mr. Dhanadhi Mara. So these are the key stakeholders who were able to uh, bring this virtual reality education into Tamil Nadu. And this was uh, during July, 2022. So we delivered virtual reality content and on the, we were on the major news articles as well. So what we delivered, right? So if you see here, after extensive research with educational contents, we deliver, we prepared 10 plus VR educational concepts uh, covering science and math, especially for students who are in grade six, seventh, and eighth. Right? The medium of education was uh, uh, developed in Tamil, as it is a Dravidian language natively spoken in the region, and in, also in English. So this was implemented in five uh, government schools, uh, which is public schools. Right? So let me show you a demo of what the content was. So it is just a quick two minutes demo. So this is about we all know uh, what electricity. electricity. Do we know how electricity is produced? Let's understand. Batteries are the source of electricity. Let's see how batteries work. There are two empty beak and the flask here is filled with potato juice. This potato juice will act as an electrolyte that helps in speeding up the conduction of electricity. There are two copper rods that are positively charged and two zinc rods that are negatively charged. There are wires to connect these rods. So this is the demo shown to students, like they'll have to pick up this and then they have to drop the juice in the beaker. Place a copper rod and zinc rod in the two beakers given. Use the wires and connect the zinc rod in one beaker to the copper rod in the other beaker. Connect the left out zinc and copper rods to the two ends of the bulb. Did you just notice the bulb glowing? This is how batteries work to produce electricity. So I'll stop with this. So that is one example where you see that uh, school children where usually in real life, they cannot uh, play with electricity. Right? So this is where uh, VR, VR simulation comes in place. So now students are able to learn this. They can even exper experiment uh, inside this atmosphere. So there is no hazards or no accidents happening because of this. So let me move on to the next one. Here it is. Yeah. 
so what happened like after we implemented it so we wanted to understand like what is the difference uh, kids have seen right so one of the key features we uh, implemented was the dashboard through which the performance of the students was monitored real time right so when we saw that the cumulative concept score uh, after using vr uh, uh, training it was up by 55% more than traditional learning right? we also saw 75% uh, increase in cumulative knowledge score and we saw three three times increase in attention span and because the focus is there it's a new tech device and kids always love new gadgets and we the best thing we saw is the attendance right so especially when there was vr labs in school during that specific day the, the there was 100% attendance so the next thing is about the performance and right? so the performance which was recorded before and after vr session so we did a paper based test on the topic of atomic structure and right? so when we conducted this test uh, for two different groups of students right we studied that the students go 75% higher in the assessments taken after a vr session right? so this was the performance on a topic and the next thing is about the knowledge score right so the above table it will give you the average knowledge retention score obtained by the students secured in vr session across multiple schools so the students were able to retain 75% of the knowledge on an average the next impact was the interest level right so the interest level suggests that the program was successful in increasing student engagement and interest in learning by utilizing multi sensory learning experiences and gamification it was more engaging and then the learning environment was very effective in holding students attention then you can compare with the traditional classroom teaching right so this has resulted in a more positive and productive learning experiences for students resulting in long term benefits for the education and future success and you can see the testimonials from kids here right? so they were very excited to see the space rockets and satellites right from the classroom right they have studied about it it was a theoretical subject but now they are able to visualize it right? and the other student says that learning science this way is more interesting than classroom learning we love seeing space so close right? and the person the other student says that not it's just not science it will be great to learn all our subjects in vr right? so these were these were amazing testimonials from kids and as you know that uh, there are lots of benefits in this uh, vr training and uh, especially so this was catered to school students so I, we wanted to showcase about this and uh, this vr training modules is not only useful in this uh, for school kids but uh, now we are seeing that it is being implemented in industries factories and in universities where for example in universities professors can can showcase or uh, teach from one location and students can uh, don't need to be in one location if they have a vr device they can connect from anywhere in the world right? and if you see uh, in industries there are very hazardous trainings which is happening for example safety trainings safety trainings are happening are learned only through e learnings or through materials or just by other people's experiences but through this vr lab through this vr uh, uh, technology we can simulate uh, training experiences especially when for example if there is a fire accident in an industry a fire accident can be simulated and all this uh, anxiety which creates during this uh, accident will be shown over there so everything will be flying around so the person knows like where the fire extinguisher is it is uh, he'll go over there he'll pick the fire extinguisher and try to put the fire off so once this simulated training is done it is stored in their uh, internal memory right? so this is what the advantage of uh, uh, vr technology is which we have been uh, noticing all across the industry and it's very nice that uh, you have come to see this uh, uh, to listen to this webinar and especially learn about the xr technologies and thank you so much
open for questions. If you have any questions, please go ahead and we can answer you accordingly. Thank you very much, uh, Mas. Uh, so yeah, please feel free to ask uh, your questions. So in the meantime, I have one question, which is uh, basically right now we have some limitation in terms of the technology for the VR. And then the amount of time that one student or one person can spend in the uh, VR environment is something mm -hmm. that is challenging in terms of uh, the simulation sickness that uh, a person might have, right? So mm -hmm. have you can you share your experience in terms of how much the students could be in the VR mode, considering all of these factors like simulation sickness or things like that? Yes, since it's a new device and it's a new gadget people are experiencing, right? So I usually use it for two hours, three hours without any, because it's a elastic memory, right? So which, yeah. is, which has improved by using it. But initially, it is recommended to use it for 15 minutes. That's what we say to everyone. And mm -hmm. it is initially uh, recommended to use it for 15 minutes. And later on, you can use it till 45 minutes. Yes, there is motion sickness. Yes, there is a uh, difference because of the weight, because of a new thing, which is a kind of foreign thing, which is connected to your face. Right? But uh, once you start using it, once the... Uh, once the crowd uh, gets familiarized with it. And now we are also seeing that the weight of the device is being reduced. So even if you see Apple's Vision Pro, so they have put the battery package separately. So it is like a separate thing which is coming out. So the weight is being reduced. So because of this, now we are seeing that the motion sickness and uh, the differences in this are being reduced. Right? So it's a new technology, yes it will continue to yeah uh, develop up yes so uh, thank you very much for that if there is any questions then uh you can i think yes uh one participant yes so muhammad hello muhammad can you hear me yes i can no, okay, uh, there's other person. person. Okay. Another person that raised uh, his hand, probably he is uh, not there. So, yeah, we have one question in the meantime from uh, Evalina. So, the question is Are these issues with the internet connectivity or uh, the strength of the internet? Plus? Yes, yes. The issues with, uh, for what, like, is it? Uh... So I guess if I'm not wrong, uh, probably she can clarify, but mm -hmm. I think she's asking about the issues for, uh, yes, yeah, so so she she's now can ask her question directly. Eva, Evalina, are you there? Yes. Um, hi, I'm wondering, um, I'm guessing that the headsets require some internet connection to other devices. So I'm wondering if um, do you have to have a certain level of internet connectivity or strength? Like, do you need 5G network or does 3G, 4G work or anything else to do with internet? Regarding infrastructure, Evalina, so if you see, right, so the uh, technology we use it if you connect with Wi-Fi, right? With a normal Wi-Fi, it can be used. Right? And regarding 3G or 4G, depending upon a location, like depending upon which uh, country you are in, uh, uh, it may vary. So the infrastructure requirements are being monitored when we develop that. When we develop any content, so this is useful only for multiplayer options so if the professor needs to be somewhere and the students are somewhere right so this is very useful when uh, during those times right? and regarding this technical part i believe 
depending upon the development request, right? So it can vary. Okay, so I hope that uh, answers your questions. Uh, now I have Muhammad on the board. Muhammad, can you hear? Muhammad, yes. Uh, so he's raising his hand. Yes, but I think. I, I have one question, if I may. Uh... I put it in the chat because I cannot put on the Q&A. Uh, sorry for that. But uh, my question was, thank you, first of all. Thank you very much for very, very interesting uh, project that you are doing and, uh, and very short and interesting presentation about that. Thank you for, for covering that. Uh, it, it was really interesting. And my, my question is more about the, the post-research um, aspect of this you you mentioned this was a research project uh, and definitely it showed uh, the advantage of using vr in uh, in students uh, learning etc but do you think uh, this is going to be or is it something that schools can continue using it after the study is finished um, is there any plan from their side to for example at uh, equip their labs with, with this VR uh, and so on. Did you get any sense of this uh, excitement from the schools themselves uh, to, to move on to, the, to this direction? That was my question, first question. Okay, yes, Dr. Ali. So we developed, initially we developed content for math and science. So now we are seeing a request for other subjects as well, right? So they want to implement this because it brings excitement to students and we are we are solving a core problem where the important part is like uh, people, students are now able to visualize it right so any theoretical subjects which is there so teachers are coming up with uh, ideas to bring those theoretical uh, thing into visualization there is excitement there is a, a request as well it is increasing I think from Mohammed Shwebu. Yeah, so okay, maybe, yeah. Uh, no, she's he's saying that uh, there was something wrong with his system. So yes, another question is from uh, Eva again, and I'm reading the question. Can you please uh, speak to the following factors which can hinder its widespread adoption in India or other global? South countries. So the first one is power supply and electricity in remote areas. The second one uh, is lack of access to the VR devices. So these are basically the challenges or the factors that she wants. The third one is the technical expertise. So maybe just you can answer Mohammed uh, Maz is one by one about the power supply and electricity in remote areas. Perfect. Okay. Let me start with, uh, yeah, I can see the questions. So yeah. the first question is regarding power supply and electricity in remote areas. Right? So this VR devices are improving. So currently we see that uh, it holds power supply of approximately one to two hours. Right? So through which uh, the contents can be seen. Right? So uh, yeah, that's a, that's a challenge. So in remote areas, when there is no power supply, and obviously the, there is a limitation in devices, right? So in terms of, uh, you, if you say in terms of the content delivery, the content is not more than the specified hours. So students experience it maximum of 15 minutes. It's not beyond that, right? And lack of access to VR devices, that's right. So it depends, it depends upon the funding, like how many VR devices they, they have it in uh, school. Right. For example, the best thing is like uh, the thing we did is the implementation of VR lab. Right? So all different uh, students from different grades, they're able to go to the VR lab and make use of that uh, VR devices. Right? Maz, so, may I jump? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Sorry for interrupting you. So regarding the, the VR devices, you are saying that the schools should have the, the devices or you are providing the, the devices to the school? So for this part, uh, 
a separate VR lab was uh, set up and then devices yeah. were uh, kept over there. So schools ha had already, right? So you are saying that different schools have already the devices? That's right, yeah. Okay. So there are two models. So that's what we implement. That's what we convey to everyone. There are two models. One is like uh, these devices can be bought by schools. They can have it on their own. There is one more model, which is uh, uh, people like uh, people from Menikara. They'll go conduct classes and then uh, take the devices back right, after the classes are done. So okay. those two models are done. Right? This is on the business side. Yeah. 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 So yeah, third question is technical expertise, operating and maintaining VR equipment. So this is also on the device side, right? So if the VR, so usually I believe uh, Meta Oculus has one year of uh, warranty, I believe. And if there are any issues, then you can fix it. Uh, it's similar to a mobile phone or a laptop, right? It's the same thing, right? So the third, fourth question is language barriers, creating VR simulation language. Okay, yeah. So regarding this, right, so depends. So even last week I was in an event where they had uh, indigenous languages, right, in the simulations. Right? So all these languages are an audio file, which is behind the software part, right? So different languages can be implemented depending upon the, depending upon the request or depending upon the region. Right, so this will be an additional effort which needs to be done. Right? So English being a link language, so English is commonly used, and uh, our system, uh, the software we develop, is uh, mostly explained in English. Right? The fifth one is educational infrastructure. Even if VR is available, schools and educational institutions may lack the infrastructure to integrate VR experiences effectively. That's right. So it is a new emerging technology. Now people are learning about it. They are adopting it. Right. So uh, yes, they lack infrastructure. So infrastructure, in the sense, the main thing we need is internet, right? Internet and devices, right? and especially the uh, classroom space. Right? So if this is there, then this can be implemented. Right. So it's just the change of uh, acceptance of a new thing, which is uh, taking some time, right? So this is a challenge, that's right. Yeah. And it's the same thing, like if you see the sixth point, it's acceptance and awareness. So people are accepting it right now. They are seeing the benefits. There are studies done by uh, big corporates, many, many institutes, universities, especially there is a department in York University where even you, you, are, uh, you are working on the XR education, right? So all valid questions are valid. Na? So these are all the stuffs which needs to be fixed. And we have seen that it has been uh, adopted by many institutes. OK, thank you very much, Mas. Uh, You're welcome. Man. Helpful and informative. I'm also learning. So another question is from Nick. Uh, have you developed any application for language learning specifically? For language learning, uh, we did not do that. Yeah, but uh, we have seen recently, we have seen that uh, uh, we, are, we are talking about the model. So where an entire culture's uh, atmosphere is brought up. So there is an environment of an, for example, indigenous culture. They, it, they have their own indigenous uh, environment. They have their own uh, places where they sit and eat and study or when they do their parties and events. So those are all brought up in a VR atmosphere and each and every uh, items which is seen over there. So once you go close to that, you, if you click on that, you can see the translation of those. So that is a great thing which I recently came across. Right? So this can be implemented uh, through that. And language learning is a very good uh, entry barrier for uh, universities. Right? Yeah, so... Yeah, I totally agree with that. Another question from Nick is, how do you monitor uh, what is student doing what? For example, in classroom with the two or five devices. So how do you monitor these students? Uh, 
Awesome. Good question. Yeah. So when this, uh, the application is developed, so there is tracking done as well, right? So there are key performance indicators which is uh, happening behind that scenes. So when the student wears the device, so there are many trackings, for example, even eye tracking can be done. Right, specific. Uh, so, for example, uh, the sample which I showed about electricity. Right. So we can track how how the student worked on. It. So did the student properly took that positive wire? Did he put it on the left side on the positive uh, uh, positive node? Did he take the other other part and then did he properly put it over there? How many tries were done, or even was the student uh, successfully doing it? Uh, through different methodologies, through different factors, all this can be done, right? So all this can be tracked, right? So this shows the ability of the student as well, right? So when a teacher is te teaching, they know that the student was not able to understand or he, he took a certain amount of time to complete a module, right? Through this way, they can, they can teach in a better way. Okay, so my understanding is there is a process for these students to get the job done, right? So if they exactly. do something, then they, we can go and then see, let's say process A, B, C, D, and the student is still in process C, right? So that the teacher can help the students for the rest of the process, right? Yeah, so there is a dashboard separately for teachers. So where they see the student's performance. Okay. So it will be like a graph. So the, even in the presentation when I showed, there were graphs. So those were the studies done, right? So we, we studied like how the students were able to, so the studies were done based on the assessment. So after teaching, there is an assessment. So in that assessment, teacher, students goes and answers those questions. So all those questions are answered. It is tracked behind the scenes and yeah. it is presented to teachers in a dashboard. Okay, I see. So that, okay, perfect. So, Another question is from in the chat from Sulmaz, and uh, she's asking, uh, thank you very much for your interesting presentation. There is a question. So new research shows that the students' connection play an important role in enhancing learning. How is the connection of students in increasing learning defining virtual reality? Is there any defined structure, Mas? So. Yeah, Salma, Salma. So about the studies, I can tell you what we have. We are uh, getting the feedbacks, right? So since it's a multiplayer, so we have implemented multiplayer option, especially in this VR labs, right? So students are coming inside, so they are together with the teacher and also the other students, other co-students. So we have seen that uh, they are learning uh, difficult or high risk stuffs, right, which was usually not uh, learned, right? So we can, we have seen that there is excitement in it, right? And when, once they grow, or once they uh, see a real thing, they know that they are, they are able to speak about the positive wires or they're able to speak about negative wires. They know that, okay, if you put uh, positive and negative incorrectly, there might be issues, right? So this, this is the feedback which we are hearing from uh, teachers as well, that uh, they are learning all these uh, hazardous uh, uh, subjects. Right? So last part is, is there any defined structure? Right? So we, educational consultants are there. So they, they define a structure. Right? So they say, depending upon uh, region or depending upon schools, it's... Uh, uh, they define a structure where students usually, if you say for students, there is not much of the movements. So they don't have to walk or they don't have to uh, do that. So a uh, structure is defined where students can sit, they can use the jaw controller to move forward or backward. So these are the structures which is uh, uh, coming in the flow, right? So yeah, so, yeah, so in much terms much. of uh, yeah, yeah, go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Just, in terms of enhancing learning, so this is a supplementary education part, right? So this is an extra additional thing which uh, students are now seeing it. It is not replacing the current education, but it is giving them more visualization. So this is what 
uh, they are seeing it. Okay, so one question is um, that I usually think about when it comes to the VR for the education, it's uh, about uh, the, the wide spread of this technology. Maybe one of the ways that I am thinking is, for example, you can put, uh, you can, is there any type of, for example, platform that you can put some of these applications with the limited accesses online for the public in India so that the other students can also use? Or uh, is it something that you didn't think about? This is a good thing, right? So yeah, so the yeah we have not thought about it, but uh, it's good to uh, provide it to the bigger crowd. Right? Yeah, this is because you did this promote your business side as well, right? And also it helps to the other students that or teachers or schools that knows, for example, at least some of the limited materials. I know it takes a lot of time to develop this stuff of teams like. Uh, maybe another good question is how much efforts you uh, or how many how many team members do you have to develop, for example, a VR? Can you give, for example, an approximate time for the the video you showed, right, in the chemistry, right, or in the electricity side? So how much effort do you need with how many people to develop, for example? Uh, uh, VR application for just 15 minutes for, for example, a classroom? So I can tell you about a safety training, right? So for safety trainings of uh, 15 minutes to 30 minutes, it takes yeah. uh, um, two persons, approximately four weeks to develop it, right? So mm -hmm. depending upon the complexity, it changes, right? So this is a high level example where if you want to do an end-to-end -end entire experience, it yes. will at least minimum take around three to four weeks. Okay, okay. Three to four weeks for 15 minutes, for example, type of applications to teach the, okay, I see. Yeah. This is high level, right? So depending upon the complexity, the environment or the models which needs to be created, right? depending upon the depth, it completely changes, yeah. Yes, okay, so uh, if I have one more question, uh, since there is not any questions in the chat, so mm -hmm. um, when I read your bio, you said about opening uh, your business site in Canada as well, right? So may I ask, did you think or did you have any uh, kind of real application or implementation in Canadian schools? So no, not yet. So to answer it, uh, we we are in this market since 2023, this year. Right? So we are trying to connect with uh, people right now. Right? And obviously any reference is uh, always welcome. Right? Yeah. So looking forward for it. So we already have contents for math and science which we can share we also are preparing continuously preparing more contents so we can yeah we can collaborate with schools and and see where we can take it forward because uh, the best thing about this technology is it's not only for a specific reason right? so middle-aged school students they uh, they have a specific uh, learning modules yeah. which is mostly common all over globally right which is common globally, and this can be taken everywhere. So we are looking, we are open for partnerships. We are looking for recommendations and referrals. Uh, okay, so um, thank you. I should say thank you very much for you, Maz, and for the other participants. Maybe I can add to the last questions that I had is our next session is uh, maybe I can share my screen if I can do that or Francesco, you can share your screen about the next. Uh, yeah, I can share my, or you I should can be able share to share my screen uh, if you see so many things, but 
tabs, I mean, but you can see Maz, right? Or Francesco? Yes. Can... Yeah. Yep. So the next speaker session, they will. Uh, basically, we have two professors from York University, and they will talk about making virtual reality a reality in the chemistry and biochemistry classrooms. They will share their experience for the Canadian schools. So it might be interesting for uh, you and all of the par participants that we have to see what's going on in Canada in terms of the schools and uh, every challenges that they are facing probably uh, regarding uh, putting VR as a new tool, an emerging tool to the students or classroom curriculum, right? So uh, yes, I just wanted to say about this. And then, uh, so yes, Francesco, do you have any things to add? If not, then. Uh, uh, no, I would just like to thank uh, uh, Maz for that great presentation. And I'm um, thank you again for, for moderating the, the Q&A session. Um, and thank you, of course, to everyone who attended today for your participation for your questions and for um, just being here and, and watching the session. Uh, and just a reminder, this session will also, it will, is being recorded and will also be up in the next couple of hours on the event page and on our YouTube channel. And I've shared all of our social medias in the chat. Um, so please feel free to continue sharing this uh, session and these series uh, within your networks uh, to anyone you know who may be interested. We, as um, Ahmad mentioned we do have a couple more sessions scheduled and we may be continuing past those as well um, for future sessions so um, yeah just stay tuned for, for all of the, the sessions coming up so thank you very much.